Welcome to Thriving with Nature, a podcast that gives you the tools you need to live a modern lifestyle that helps regenerate our planet. And now your host, Hayley Weatherburn. Episode 47, Choosing the Layout of the Land. Hello Thrivers and welcome to this week's episode. I am super excited because in a couple of hours I head over to the land and we actually start to go and peg out the first part. So the how, how I'm, I'm doing this is the first couple of years I'm just pegging out a smaller part of land. It's not small considering it's, it's still going to be 1500 square meters, <laughs> which is bigger than your average size property in Australia. Uh, not a farm, but you know, like a normal house. So pegging out that size because and then that'll be the first couple of years because I'm going to be focusing on building my home, my veggie garden, my uh, yeah. So I'm excited that I can start to do that very very soon, January, and and then in a couple of years the initial the goal is once I've been able to spend time uh, and money on building my home or my smaller area, then I can expand into what I want to do with the bigger size because the whole size of the land is 1.4 hectares which is very exciting which is about 14,000 square meters and I have lots of ideas of what I want to do with that but yeah right now yeah so uh, in a couple of hours we head over I get to meet the surveyor um, I'll walk around with the owner and sort of show where I'm looking for the first part and yeah, so that that's super exciting. I, I I've never done this before. You know, I a few few weeks ago I didn't really know what the surveyor did. <laughs> um, so it's such a journey. It's exciting. I've never done this experience of buying land or even building my own place or all those kind of things. And when I when I've sketched out this area, there's a couple of things I've taken into to consideration. The first is you know, the aspect of which way it's facing to the, towards the sun so that when I grow veggies, is it going to, is there an area I can grow veggies on? I've also considered when, where I build my house because there's, there's a potentiality for a really nice view. So where that is and which way the house will face. And I've actually got a really good aspect in that I can put my house so that it is facing north. So towards the equator in, in the north, in the south you always face north, in the north you tend to like to fa have a south facing aspect because then you're not, you're not getting like just intense morning sun or, and, or intense afternoon sun, you're, you're getting this beautiful sort of day sun, it's not coming directly into your house. Uh, and it goes across and then also what happens luckily where I am is on the north side of the house I'll be able to see the amazing mountain called Batukaru. It's got a good good view of that and on the south side that's where I'll get a view down to the south area of Bali and actually get to see all the way down to uh, like Tabanan and Kuta potentially, potentially. I have to get a bit high but from from climbing up a couple of tr trees just very sh short trees I've managed to sort of see a bit so I can imagine um, the views that I could get. So those are the things I've considered. I've also you know I think on the north side of the roof I want to have solar panels um, and then the south side I'll be able to put some glass tiles in that will allow light in but, but not getting direct sun in which would heat the house because um, you know we're in tropical area you've got to think of those things. What I don't 100% know yet so this is where this is the rough idea of what I've been thinking about. Another thing that the book The Barefoot Architect talks about is aeration like circulation where does the wind go so that you can have a naturally cool house you don't necessarily need to bring in heating or co air conditioning or what depends where you are obviously here you actually you don't need heating but it'll be nice to have a bit of a fire uh, because we're up in the mountains um, you don't need it to heat really but I'm so acclimatized to Bali that I find anything under 22 degrees Celsius I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit sorry but anything under that I find cold it's ridiculously hot like honestly that's a hot summer for, for London I'm sure um, <laughs> yeah so it doesn't really get cold but I find it cold sometimes <laughs> 
but I'm diversing. I'm, I'm going off track. So, you know, it's, it's thinking about all these different things. Where's the sun? Where's the water? Where's the wind? That's another thing I'm, I'm contemplating is there's a slope down on the east and southern aspect of the house, which would work for the, a, a natural type of sewerage system. I'm still not clear on how to explain this one but I've been having conversations with my amazing Norm is the guy who's helping me out. He's he's the one that built the eco lodge. He's he's very his values are based very on the permaculture values principles which really align with me. So I'm I'm learning a lot from him and he's sort of helping um, with these little bits of advice and information which is really awesome. So yeah, so this particular piece of land in here I've picked, it's also away from the road. I don't want to be right on the road because my land is on a main road. Main here in the village isn't really a main road. You know, there's a car maybe every five minutes. <laughs> but I actually like that because it'll be great for when I do have a bit of a farm that people can come to and learn. It's going to be an easy place to find, which is super awesome. Yeah, so I'm away from the road, I'm down a bit of a slope, so I'm thinking I'll put some water tanks up the top, which will be awesome, so that will provide water all year round. Um, there is water connected to the to springs in the rainforest that I will be tapping into, but it's always good. They, they have had six months of drought once before up here, so I want to make sure I have an extra amount of water supply that I'll be covering over time is when there isn't rain. And also another thing I've thought about is getting access to this land. So on the north side of the land of the property there is a tiny a motorbike track. It's actually cemented. Uh, everywhere here has little motorbike tracks obviously we're all on motorbikes but um yeah so there's actually a direct access that way but I, I, there's also another access that I can uh, it sounds like I can organize so that's that's plan too. Also on the land is certain trees. There's a, a beautiful mangosteen tree, which it's the only mangosteen tree that I can see on the property. Uh, I love mangosteens. They're this amazing sweet fruit that comes out. Um, to have that on my own land, that is just super exciting. So I'm, uh, that I want it on the property. There's cacao trees, banana trees. Yeah, so it's, it's super exciting. I've sort of got an idea where I want the veggie garden where I want a bit of an area to play for people to come over. I want a fire pit, all these things, all these things I'm thinking about. So I, I, one thing I wanted to come back to was last week I talked about how I was about to go and have a conversation with, with the owners and had Norm come along and Katut is um, the local, beautiful local soul that is helping me, helping me come into this community and connect and make sure that I'm doing the right thing. I want to respect the culture and I want to respect the humans that are in this village, that this is their village, that they've lived here forever and ever. I, I want to come in openly and just understand their culture and how it works and yeah, so uh, these beautiful souls came with me to the owners and we, we sat down and, and for two hours we just had a beautiful conversation of, you know, you know, this is your land and this is what we're looking to do or what I'm looking to do. You know, it said this in the contract. Can we have a bit of a discussion around this? What's this, this? And it was just really beautiful. It was just a very open conversation. And yeah, we got to learn more about each other. I think that way, you know, you're getting to know the family. One thing I thought was really exciting is the fact that as this contract goes through then that this family will become my Balinese family and you know for ceremonies I'd get ready there and come with them and and that way you know that I'm coming you know to the temple with that family and yeah so that's that's kind of cool it's kind of cool to have my own Bali family and yeah I think yeah it was just a really beautiful experience. So, so far, so good. You know, you, you just never know. Like I said last week, you just never know what can happen and what's, what goes on. So I, um, yeah, uh, but it went well enough for us to move forward. Uh, and then we've got the contract being drawn up and that is what's happening. So it's all very exciting. But now I have to get ready and I'm going to film this. I'm going to film sort of going around the land and, you know, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I, I want to document this. This is all going on my YouTube channel, this experience of, of getting land and, and coming into the jungles of Bali and 
and building a regenerative home that's modern but is totally thriving with nature that's the that's the whole goal yeah so there you go beautiful souls i just wanted to update you it's an exciting day i've got to get ready and yeah stay tuned make sure you head over to the youtube thriving with nature or even facebook or instagram or the website thrivingwithnature.com to come and check out and join the journey and just hang out and become part of this movement of living a regenerative lifestyle that is the goal if we can become more part of the solution rather than the problem i feel that as individuals together we can shift this planet's trajectory uh, ourselves without having to wait for laws and decisions to be made and people to be uh, you know voted in and all those kind of things we can change we can make the change now just by living a certain way so that is everything all right have a beautiful day have a beautiful week thank you so much for listening i'm very grateful to have you with me on this journey it's amazing bye for now hey if you enjoyed listening to my podcast remember to subscribe to hear more you also have to come check out the living supplement garden a garden that reads your individual's body's condition and grows the substances it requires to move towards optimal health and potentially healing your ailments When we align with nature, we thrive with nature. I'd love to have you join myself and others as we discover the magic of nature together and strive to heal both ourselves and our planet. Go to thrivingwithnature.com.